Hello and welcome to another one of my occasional tutorials or how-tos. This time we're going to deal with the LG R105, also known as the LG360 VR360 camera. One of these, these things here. I bought mine back in 2016, um, right at the start of VR, I think. It was one of the first cameras to market, the LG360. And I thought it was a good little camera. And I used it quite a lot. Right up until 2019, I'm not going to give you my life history, but in 2019, I became seriously ill and spent most of that year in and out of hospital. Well, my hobbies, including making videos, making VR videos, had to be put aside. So I put my LG camera in a drawer and I just left it there. I took most of 2020 to convalesce. So by the end of 2020, when I was starting to get back into doing all the things that I did, I went looking for my LG camera. And I fired it up and I connected it to my phone, except I didn't connect it to my phone. It would not connect to my phone and I couldn't work out why. At this point, I've got to explain that the LG camera, this thing, I've still got it. Look, the LG camera, it needs to connect to either an Android or an iOS phone to process the videos into virtual reality, equi rectangular films so that they can be uploaded to YouTube and Facebook. And it's all done via the app and the phone connects to the app via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Well, my camera would not connect to my phone and I couldn't work out why. And then I did a bit of Googling and I found out that LG had done the dirty. In the middle of 2020, LG decided that they would stop support for this camera. Not only did they decide that they would stop support for the camera, but they crippled the app so that it wouldn't connect to the camera and then they removed it from the app store. And it's unbelievable that all these people had spent money with LG and then they just abandoned them. They just cast them aside and just stopped the app from working and stopped them from enjoying the camera. So I put the camera back in the drawer and I guess I was going to throw it out because at that point it was completely useless to me because the app wouldn't work. However, last week I was cleaning out my drawer and I came across this camera again and I thought, I don't know, there must be a way to do it. So I've got a new phone. I've got a different phone now. I've got a Samsung Galaxy S21. So I went on to APK Pure and I found, an, I found the last copy of the app that LG had released and I downloaded it and sideloaded it onto my phone thinking, well, maybe it's been sorted out. And again, I had the same problem. My phone would not connect with my camera. And I tried everything. I went through all of the options, manual connections and everything else. It wouldn't do it. And I did a lot more reading. And that's when I discovered that LG had actually crippled the app. And they actually said in their final message that they were actually going to do this. They actually said they were going to stop the app from working, which is exactly what they did do. So this was a heap of junk. And I thought, no, that's not right. That can't be right. I've spent that money on the camera. At the time, it was it was quite a bit of money I spent on this. And that can't be right. There's got to be a way of doing it. And then when I was playing about with it, I noticed something. LG, the camera, the format that this camera saves in is MP4. Now, people like Insta360 X2 and I think Gear360 and other camera makers, they all save in their own proprietary extension. Um, the Insta 1360 is .insv format. Well, I noticed these were in MP4, and I thought, hang on, if it's in MP4, maybe I can work it in After Effects. So I did a bit of research, I did a bit of study, and I thought, yes, I can. And so I've managed to actually process the film from this in After Effects and turned it into an equivalent rectangular film ready to be uploaded onto YouTube. And now I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So don't throw this camera away. It still has some life in it. You can still process the videos from it. Here we go. Here we are in the main After Effects screen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our footage. So I already transferred it from the memory card onto my PC and I gave it a friendly name. In this case, I called it test file. So we'll just import it. Test file. There we go. That's brought it into Adobe. Now, if I double click it, you can see it's got the two spherical images that you're familiar with from LG cameras. So we've got we've got our image there. Um, now, what are we going to do? Well, what we've got to do is we've got to stitch these two images together. Now, the way to do that 
is to actually treat them as two separate files. Although both video files are put on a single file by the camera, we need to treat them as two separate files. In this case, a left-hand side and a right-hand side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to split them, which we'll do in a couple of seconds. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to make a new composition. So I just drop that down to there, and we've made a new composition. Now I'm going to go to the composition settings, and the first thing I'm going to do it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call this left. The reason being is we're going to split the left hand side. Now I've called it left. Now, if you look here, this is very important. The aspect ratio of this video is two to one. That means it's two times wide to one times high. But what we want is we want to split just the left hand side of the screen. And that aspect ratio is one to one. So the first thing we need to do is we need to change this composition to one to one. In this case, the height and width must be the same. So we're looking at 1280 height. So all I do is I just change the width to 1280. Right, change that to 1280, and we're at one to one. Now, as you can see, it's actually given me a one to one ratio, but it's put it in the middle of the composition when what we want is the left hand side. That's very, very easy to click, very, very easy to, to sort out. All we do is we go to our align. And we click a line layer to, in this case, left. This is why I've called it the left. If the align panel isn't showing, by the way, just go up to window and make sure that a line is ticked in window here. OK, that's the left hand side done. Now we're going to do the right hand side. The way we're going to do the right hand side is I'm going to control D, which duplicates that layer. And that gives me a new layer called left two. And we go to the composition settings on left two. And we're going to call this one right. So we call that right. Again, checking that it's one-to-one, -one, 1280 by 1280, which it is. And we do the exact opposite this time. We align it to the right-hand side. So we've got it aligned to the right-hand side. So what we've actually done is we split the video into two. So we've got our right-hand one, which is this one, and we've got our left-hand one, which is that one. So we've now split them into two. What we need to do now is we need to change them into equi-rectangular format. At the moment, they're in spherical fisheye, but we need to change them into equi-rectangular format, which is the actual format that places like YouTube and Facebook understand. And that's very easy to do, as it happens. It's very easy to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new composition. So I'm just going to drag the left onto the new composition icon. There we go. We've got a new composition. And I'm going to call this stitched because that's what it is it's the final stitched thing so stitch now because we've separated the two and put them as a one-to-one -one ratio for the final composition we've got to put them back as a two-to-one ratio so what we need to do for this is we need to change the width back to 2560 so if i change the width back to 2560 that gives us back as you can see there it gives us back our aspect ratio of 2.1 we're still spherical. So what we need to do now is we need to change that to equi rectangular. The way we do that is you go to effects and presets, type in VR, and we look for VR converter. So just drop VR converter on top of your footage, and then come up to here where it says input, and we change the input to fisheye full dome, which is what this is. This is fisheye full dome. So we change the input, boom. It's changed it to equi-rectangular. So we've done that. That's the left-hand side. For the right-hand side, all we're going to do is we're going to drop the right-hand side on top of the left-hand side in our final composition. And we're going to do exactly the same again. We're going to go to the VR converter. We're going to drop it on top of our footage. And we're going to select fisheye full dome. Now, what we've actually got is we've got our right-hand one on top of our left-hand layer which is not what we want, only occupying 180 degrees, when what we actually want to do is want to occupy all 360 degrees. So we have to split one of the two to go side by side. In this case, I'm going to split the right-hand one because I'm working. And the way we do that, if you go to Reorient Camera View, Pan, and see this here, we just change that to 180. That's it, it's split. Now you're looking at what an equi rectangular looks like. The next thing we need to do is we need to stitch it. Now, I'm going to show you a quick way to stitch it. It's not perfect stitching. You can actually get the stitching 
pixel perfect, but that's beyond the scope of this short tutorial. If you're familiar with After Effects, you'll understand about the virtual reality brushes and how you can paint things in and out, and the VR editing. But for this, we're just going to show you simply how to stitch it. Now, very important to remember with the VR, with the LG camera, although the two lenses say they're 180 degrees, they're not. They're probably about 195 degrees each side. That gives us a little bit of leeway to play about with, with the field of view. So if you look at these houses here, I'm going to stitch these houses so that they're together. But because we've got that extra field of view to play with, I can do that very simply by changing the field of view. So I come up to the field of view here, and I move that. And as you can see, there we go. I've moved the houses together. That's done the right-hand side. Now, I know it's on the left-hand side. That tree is out. Those houses are in line there. But on the right-hand side, those trees are out. So we go to the left, and we do exactly the same again. We change the field of view until the trees just line up where they're supposed to do, which is about there. That's it. We're done. That is how you simply stitch it together. It doesn't look like an equi rectangular movie, but I promise you it is. That's it. We've done. We've actually processed it and we've stitched it. All we need to do now is render it. So the quick way to do that is to go to composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. That'll call up Adobe's a Media Encoder. There it is. Give it a second and it'll put it in the uh, it'll put it in the queue. Now different people do it in different ways. Myself, I always render to an SSD, a solid state drive, because it's it's much faster. In this case, my F drive is my solid state drive. So as you can see, the output file is F renders stitched one MP4. That's what we're uh, that's what we're calling the file. So that will now go into my F drive. What we need to do is we need to tell it that it's a VR thing. We've got to inject the virtual reality metadata. We're going to do that here now. So we go to match source high bitrate, click it, let the dynamic link library do its thing. And here it comes up. Right, format H264. Reset. We need, and if I move out the way so you can see it, VR monoscopic match source stereo audio, because that's what we're actually using. So that's the preset we've got to use, VR monoscopic match source. Come down to the video settings. A couple of things I change here. I always use maximum render quality. Come down to the video settings. Render at maximum depth. Bitrate encoding, we're going for variable bitrate 2 pass, and I'm going to turn the bitrate up to 130. 100 is the target bitrate, and the maximum bitrate 135. So we're going to give it as much quality as we can. Click OK. Now, this is going to, we're working with very large files here. There's only a very short file I, shot, I took, but we're actually working with very large files, so this is going to take a bit of time to render. So I'm going to speed it up in post-production, but to render it, just click... There we go, so we'll let that render away. Okay, that's it. We're all simply and done. And does it work? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's open it up in a uh, media player and have a look. And here we are, Stitch 1, as you can see. Perfect VR 360, even the, uh, even the stitching just there. And the reason it looks a bit different is because um, the sun was shining on one side of the camera, not the other, so it's exposed differently. But I can obviously alter those effects in After Effects if I so choose at the time of stitching. But you can see it's stitched quite perfectly, and it gives us a quite realistic thing. So don't throw that camera away. It can be saved.